Welcome to this rebroadcast featuring Chris Shea of Life's Journey Life Coaching and author Lisa DeLay. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And also you can go to sparkmymuse.com to watch this replay, and you can also even go there live to hear it now. So if you're joining us, Chris and I try to do this at least once a month, and sometimes it's twice a month. Join in for join together and invite you also to discuss some kind of topic we'll, we'll be discussing. And today it's about your life as a story and adding new chapters to your story. And we talk about all different sorts of things. And you're definitely welcome to pop in. And if you're listening out there and you have something to say and you have and you want to spread this out to other people to um, tweet it out and talk about what we're what we're talking about tonight and see where it goes. Yes, please do. Chris, do you want to talk about what you do? Sure. Um, as uh, you just mentioned, Lisa, you know, we uh, try to do this together a couple times a month and uh, very pleased that we do that. Um, and yes, people can find out about me over at lifesjourneyblog.com. And I'm a counselor and a life coach and a campus minister. And uh, I also have a private practice. Uh, so check me out over at uh, lifesjourneyblog.com and everything is listed there and what I do. And I also have a podcast on all of the typical podcast places. Uh, you can find me and it's uh, called On Finding Peace. So check it out. One of the things I appreciate about Chris's work is his concentration a lot on mindfulness. And what happens in as you focus on mindfulness, and I guess that's a little bit of a redundancy in terms. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just a little, but that's okay. <laughs> um, as you develop mindfulness practices in your life and you become more focused and aware of what's happening right in the now, a lot mm -hmm. of anxiety goes away because you get uh, the chatter of your mind and the overthinking that our minds tend to do, our little monkey brains go chattering away, mm -hmm. thinking about the past regrets or problems or thinking about anticipating problems in the future and planning and over planning right. that we tend to get on this little hamster wheel. Mindfulness will really pull you away from those thoughts so you can get distance from them and not think mm -hmm. of yourself as your thoughts. And I have found a lot of spiritual practices and meditative practices that draw me into uh, mindfulness and meditation to be a gift in my life in a big way. Um, so, right. and, and also just to introduce myself um, to anybody who's tuning in by mistake mm -hmm. <laughs> or doesn't know who I am. Um, I'm Lisa DeLay, as you probably figured out, and I do a twice a week podcast called Spark My Muse. I've blogged for many years and I've also written a few books and you can just mm -hmm. Google Lisa DeLay, you'll probably find either Lisa has associated with something delayed or you will find me <laughs> and uh, I, I invite you to join up with me and what I'm doing. I also am going to be doing some things on Patreon, which I'm doing to support my show, Listener Supported, mm -hmm. that'll be a lot more exclusive for Patreon members over the summer. And hopefully Chris and I will be meeting at least, I'm thinking at least once a month over the summer, kind of pulling back from the twice a month, and getting a little <laughs> more of a break. Do you plan? At, at least for the summer. Yeah, but and we can, yes, we, we definitely can't take too much time away so we can keep our uh, yeah. good, good uh, you know, groove going here. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, and I love it. But, I, we always have oh, yeah. very rich conversations and I appreciate them very much. As do I, but uh, yeah, we, we can take a little summer, you know, a little break <laughs> in the summer type okay. thing. Do you have, you know, you're going to, will you be off from school in campus ministry stuff in the summer? Or do you still wind up having to go in? Uh, here and there I go in, but that's one of the wonderful perks of the job is, is I get to spend summer uh, relaxing with family and, you know, just kind of enjoying nature and, hopefully doing a little bit more writing and I still have my clients to see and, you know, blogs to do. But uh, other than that, as far as going into school, it's great. Yeah. Sleeping a little bit more, have some coffee and enjoy nature. 
That's wonderful. Yeah, that is really wonderful. And I'm hoping to get outside a lot more too. My kids are weird that they don't like the outdoors. <laughs> they would rather be inside. And I have to like trick them almost to come outside. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to, I will have to kind of force them outside, but I plan to do that. And um, there's a lot of beautiful nature around us. So I, the yes. next few months, I'm hoping to get outside. And uh, if that means that they have to take away their phones and ground them first, <laughs> So be it. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Uh, get away yeah. from technology and enjoy nature. That, that's <laughs> whatever it takes. Them. I have to ground them to their rooms. So that would be a reward. I have to ground them to outside. Yes, definitely. <laughs> There's too many good things in their rooms to, to, to be a punishment. Yeah, I'm a mean mom. Thanks, Rhiannon. Yeah, I'm a monster. I, I'm a monster. The other the other day, I'll tell this quick story before we – well, see, some life is a story. Some an episode little episode in, in the story of, of my life. So I'm visiting, I hope nobody's heard this before, so, but I'm visiting my sister over Easter. She has two kids. She's a mom like me. Our kids are similar age. And my son who, who is on the autism spectrum, to give you a little bit of context, he's 16. Sometimes he seems like 12. Sometimes he's hormonally like totally 16 and we butt heads and the whole bit. Mm -hmm. But he decides that he's going to rat me out to my sister in front of me and he thinks power trip you know this could be awesome mm -hmm. and so he goes my sister's name's amy she, he goes guess what my mom did like and he looks at me looks back at her looks at me like i'm gonna get you now mm -hmm. and she goes i would love to know what she did what your mom did tell me exactly what she did and she looks at me like haha mm -hmm. <laughs> and i have a feeling i know what he's gonna say and so i'm like please Please tell her. Please tell her what I did. He goes, my mom came back from work. And I, I get back about 20 minutes before they, after they do. My mom came back and she, she made us turn on the lights. Dead silence. My sister's like, what? That's right. She made us turn on the lights. And I'm like, yeah, I did. I did. I admit it. I came inside. It was like a cave. It was not a single light on. They were on their phones. It was dark. And I said, what are you guys doing? It's like a cave in here. Turn on some lights. What are you doing? <laughs> this is craziness. Turn on some lights. I know. I'm a monster. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a monster. Yeah, we, we need to call. Abuse. Exactly. We need to call child protective. <laughs> uh, you got to go into counseling. You are the I don't know what I was there. thinking. I, I was I, like I, halfway raising my voice, too. I was like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. What's going on? No lights in the house at all. It's like. A cave in here and he was like that's it everyone's gonna know that you're a monster <laughs> it was awesome and, and my sister was like that sounds terrible well you know, i was like what are you talking about that's it, that's the best you know you can come they were going with. green and they're getting in touch with their caveman <laughs> yeah. you know that that's what they were doing I mean, it's... it was like okay yeah yeah i think it was, yeah exactly so it was really it was really funny because like to them that's like an outrage like oh, yeah. oh oh she wanted us to turn on lights and we didn't even notice they were off <laughs> so anyway but yeah so that's an episode in my life so the the kids of today what are you gonna do <laughs> no i'm thinking like if they had like if they could have been a fly on a wall for you know an, a day in my life growing up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm not going to even get into some of the stuff, but like they have no idea what terror means. You know, it's like, they you know, have like, no clue no what we went through. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have no idea. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that, anyway, they think so, they have it hard. Oh, oh here comes no. Charlie. <laughs> oh, good. He's going to save us from my stories, hopefully. All right, here comes Charlie <laughs> from Fable Podcast. I, I, uh, Think you guys should tune into fable podcast don't hopefully he'll explain uh, what he's up to with that he, he was having a little trouble with video so let's see if this works okay he said he finally got it um it, it's trying to let you in yeah he, he's trying yeah it can be really funny sometimes so we'll see if this works you know there's wonderful technology you know yeah, and also sometimes if you're on your phone, I don't know, Charlie, if you're on your phone or not, but it, that can be a problem sometimes. It's still trying, although it's telling me oh. on my end. Oh no, too ugly for my computer. <laughs> I think you're gonna you're gonna be okay. You can always wear a Chewbacca mask. 
I don't know. I mean, my computer lets me on. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I don't. It's still trying. I don't know if it'll happen. I'm going to go back out and retry. But you're handsome. Ah. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't need know to start with that Chrome. comment. <laughs> Make sure you're on Chrome, Charlie. And, um, oh, okay. It's going to try again. Yeah, he's, he's going to try to come back in. Okay, we'll let him in again. <clears throat> See if we can get this to work. Yeah, one and one of the things I wanted to to make sure that we could talk about too is how we will oftentimes think that our that our life is sort of heading down this one way, and that we we have a lot more power than we assume we do. And that's kind of mm -hmm. what I mean about adding chapters to your story. We tend to tell we tend to tell people things about ourselves, and don't think that we can tell other things about ourselves and that i guess i could go into that more later i don't know it's not working out man i don't know what the problem is i don't know i can see it trying but i don't see you i don't know if you can that's that's weird i'm not sure why very strange Let me just... maybe i'll try to make you a host let's see that helps. I, I don't know if it would, but or it totally blocks. You mine. just never <laughs> totally know with Blab, but yeah. So in the meantime, while we get this going, um, have you have you seen your life in in the terms of episodes or in the terms of um, waking up to new chapter in your life or something like that, Chris? Oh, definitely. You know, and, and I, I love this topic because. I, I think that's something, you know, if people take that time to reflect on their lives and, uh, you know, as we're talking a bit about the mindfulness, you know, spend some time in, in looking at, you know, what do we learn from where we've been? And I think most of us can find that our, our lives tend to go in chapters and, you know, it's not just like growing up stages or developmental stages, but really the chapters, you know, what were those times when we were younger and then, you know, either got married, got into the workforce, changed jobs, changed careers. All of these are those different chapters. And, you know, for me, there, there's been multiple of those, you know, from going from, you know, the growing up to seminary, to married, to, you know, working uh, in a school. So, yeah, I think we can spend time looking at those chapters that maybe we can find out what did we learn from the previous chapters that are enabling us to uh, turn the page and, and write this chapter, you know, that this chapter isn't, uh, you know, just out of the blue. Yeah. That this chapter is a part of the previous chapters. And, and a lot of times I think people want to forget those, you know, like, well, we're going to forget that period of my life and move on to this mm -hmm. one. And, mm -hmm. You know, that's fine, but what did you learn from the previous chapter so that, you know, we can focus on what's going on in this chapter and, you know, how can I better myself and maybe not make the same mistakes I made in, in a previous chapter? So, definitely. I, yeah, and I also was, I was thinking, too, about uh, how, does a, like how are different control. stories written, how are different narratives written? You know, when you see a movie, sometimes a screenplay, if you want to talk about a story like that, um, that sometimes a movie will start in the beginning and it or or there'll be foreshadowing or, you know, it'll start in mm -hmm. the middle and then go back. I think about different movies that were set up in unique ways like Memento or, you know, some of the different movies where you had you kind of had no idea or you came in in the middle or something like that. And yeah. then you had to kind of sort it out and puzzle it out what was happening. And I think that mm -hmm. we're, we're going to kind of assume that our story, you know, has to look, we're, we're thinking it kind of has to go from this way to this way to this way, when really it can kind of start out this way, circle back, take another, you know, take another clover leaf or whatever and, and move mm -hmm. around. And then it doesn't have to look like someone else's story that, that went a long way and just kept going up, you know, like the, the hockey stick, you know, where it just kind of goes up and then it can wander like, um, Mm -hmm. Like uh, Jeff Sanquist, a friend of mine who does right. the Intentionally Wandering podcast, and we were talking, he'll be on my show again on June 3rd, and he his podcast is really great. It's 
he talks about minimalism and sim simple living. Sorry, Charlie, it just keeps trying, but it's I can't get it. I can't get it. To get, I can't get. I can't figure out what's wrong because you're you're set up as a host, so it should, should just pop you in. Um, I don't know. It's so weird. Um, yeah, if you're not on Chrome, if you're trying on a computer, it will help versus probably a phone. But I, again, I'm not totally sure what to tell you. Um, it's a bummer too. I want to really hear. I really want to hear from you. Um, if anybody has any ideas about how to get him in here, I'm, I'm open to hearing them. <laughs> um, I totally lost my train of thought, Chris. This is I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> uh, oh no, yeah. not one oh, of those. Yeah, right. Is that uh, a new chapter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were looking at you know at the writing of the chapters, and you know one of the things I was thinking of when yeah you're talking about that you know that this isn't the linear, and you know I think when people you know when when I've been involved you know where you're producing something or you're filming something that you don't always film it in the order it goes, you cut and paste it later and you'll do a scene here and you'll do something else over there. And, you know, I, I think sometimes that's what happens in our lives that, you know, it seems linear because that's how we live, but the events that we're going through, you know, seem to go back and forth. And, you know, if we don't sometimes learn from those previous yeah. events, we're going to keep reliving some of those scenes again. And for some of us, those are great scenes and we want to relive those happy moments, but you know, we don't want to hmm. have to relive the not so happy moments, but how do we learn from those and then move forward in those moments? And, and I, I think those are those times when we're cutting and pasting and you know, trying to put our, our lives into some sort of order. Yeah. I totally um, remember. But I definitely don't think it's here. Well, to your point, but and you helped me remember, but and to your point, perfect. <laughs> what a boring story it would be. And we don't actually even appreciate stories that we hear if they're too good, if nothing interesting happens. But sometimes we wish our lives would go more smoothly and mm -hmm. be uneventful. But I have this sense that because we're so wired for adversity and struggle. Um, that we ourselves would be bored if our lives didn't have any mm -hmm. kind of challenge in them. And I think that's why some of these races, I don't know if you've ever heard, the story is in the struggle. No struggle, no story. Exactly, Rhiannon and kind of nailed it. And I don't know if you've ever heard of these races. They're these crazy races called like Tough Mudder and these obstacle courses where you run for 24 hours. And these are, these are people with like, mm -hmm. you know, bourgeois, yeah. <laughs> they have they have enough money to be fine, right? But they're picking to run for 24 <laughs> hours. And they're picking to suffer for not not a lot of prize money or anything. It, it's like they're picking these brutal, brutal obstacle courses. Some of them you can get like electrified by like there's electrified water and barbed wire. You're crawling under. You get all scraped up. Yeah. And you you have to from the outside looking in. You're like what? It sounds horrendous. And you have to like people throw up and have to get carried away and and you just drop out until you're at the end and almost no one really yeah. makes it to the end because it's it's horrendous but that struggle is something that people seem to thrive on and they picked to do it because it something about yeah. us feels like you've accomplished you know you've accomplished this because you went through it and i think some of that's in like even people who get a lot of piercings and tattoos and things like that once you're done with it, yeah, it doesn't feel good when maybe to some people it feels good. It, it, it does something. I think that's a small percentage. I think for a lot of people, it still really hurts. And then they're done and they're like, yeah, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's because there's exactly. something about struggle and pain <laughs> that we appreciate that we go back to it and we are okay with it, even though at the time we don't like it. And so that there's something about our story that even though we're like, oh, right. I wish it wasn't this hard. I wish I didn't have these problems. That once the problems are all removed, we seek them out. Right. Well, there, there's a uh, work that I uh, talk about in, in my university class. And unfortunately, I can't pronounce the 
individual's name who, who uh, wrote this up for the first time. And I, and I really feel bad about that. But uh, it's on what's called flow. It's the psychology of flow. And uh, I really wish I could pronounce his name. It starts with a C. But anyways, uh, Google flow with author with C. But, um, but that, that's kind of his concept that, you know, how do we find the deepest happiness and fulfillment out of life? regardless of the situation we're in. And what he comes up with is saying that the flow is what happens when we challenge ourselves in that challenge and, and accomplishing that challenge. That is where we get, uh, yeah. you know, the, the deepest happiness and fulfillment. And the bottom line of, of his research in, in this uh, uh, psychology of flow is that if we want to change the world, we need to change. But it's not the world that needs to change, but we need to change ourselves. And the more we challenge ourselves to that change, uh, you know, that's really where we're going to see a difference and where we're going to feel it. And once we feel it, we can move forward with it. So that, that kind of reminded me, as uh, you were just talking, Lisa, about, you know, the, the mutter and, uh, all those things that I like to challenge myself, but I would never ever do. Yeah, <laughs> those I would never really ever hard. do. The, the thing I had brought up before about my friend um, intentionally wandering. One of the things he said on my show. I'll give you a sneak peek of what's going to mm -hmm. little portion of what's going to happen on June third. But he was talking about when your path in life or your story wanders, and it looks like this. It, his path was going to look like like this: a student goes to med school, gets a great job. You know, it's this line like everybody thinks it's going to be. You know, mm -hmm. gets a gets a fulfilling, high paying job, gets the great house, gets the great car, done, right? And then he realized, I don't want that life. I, I it's not doing anything for me. This is a, you know, yeah, I guess I have everything I thought I'd want, and that people thought a good boy like me should get, and whatever. But he thought, mm -hmm. I, I want more adventure. I want more excitement. I want more close relationships. I don't want to just do this, you know, this rat race thing. <laughs> you know, I want, I want something else. And then he realized right. that his metric was going to look really, mm -hmm. really different than the other people who stayed on that track, right? This, this story, the so certain story that all his friends stayed on. It's going to look a certain way and they're going to say, oh, well, I just got a promotion. Well, he's not going to get a promotion doing a podcast. He's not going to get. And I said to him, yeah, I know what you mean, because if I have a really right. fulfilling conversation with a good friend of mine on a walk and, and I have them frequently, no one cares. I'm not going to get a bonus for that. It's it could be really, really mm -hmm. gratifying. It could be really satisfying. It could set me off on like three new big projects or something like that. It could help her finished project she's doing but it's not on a, any metric anybody would think was great you know wouldn't like help me get a car right. like, like there was absolutely no metric for that all i can say is that it's satisfying to me mm -hmm. but people would say well what'd you do today well i had a really great conversation they'd be like "Ooh, that's cool <laughs> who cares you know like like so yeah. your metric when your path is wandering and your story looks different than other people's stories is really hard to compare. So you can wind up feeling like, I'm not sure I'm doing mm -hmm. it right. I'm not sure that, you know, and then you wind up if you're comparing yourself right. to people who have a sort of a standard life or what society says is normal or something, and you try, try to compare yourself, you're gonna look like mm -hmm. the weirdo. And you're, but you have to go back to, it's okay if my story wanders, right. it's okay if my chapters look weird or if it looks out of order. Or, you know, I look like I should be going on this route or like I have a master's degree. I should be doing, maybe I should be teaching students. Maybe I should be doing this. And, and people will be like, why do you have that much education and you're driving a van? And so is the girl who dropped out of school at 16. Yeah, it was interesting. Well, you know, when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did put in a lot of time and a lot of money. Does make it, you wonder. Yeah, my brain says $200,000. But, you know, it's just like, but yeah, but that's still, it's still not satisfying right. me to be in a cubicle hell. You know, mm -hmm. and so 
I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a really right. wandering story, and it's gonna have oh, chapters yeah. totally weird, and it's gonna be more of a choose your own adventure story. Do you mm -hmm. remember those? Is it, I don't know. Does anybody yeah. remember those? If oh you yes, remember those, <laughs> I, I used to fill those and, out. And tell you, me if you know you what a choose your own questions. adventure story is. I'm not sure if I'm just revealed my age and just nobody has any idea. Um, yeah, because those were cool <laughs> books. I actually think that um, who wrote his memoir like that? Mm -hmm. You can still. And okay. they're still around. You That's can find so them there's, in the stores. options, and you can pick and move to the different mm -hmm. section I've of the book, them. and pick how. Right. Yes. Yeah. If you write this, yeah, your then go to this might page. Die. If you do you know, you this, then go to this page. Have a happy yeah. ending and, and really, there's only a couple possibilities. Mm -hmm. I was always like, the choose your own adventure should have like a lot of possibilities, but then of course it'd be this huge thick book. But you know, you can. My story is going to look a little more like yeah. a choose your own adventure book than a nice linear, you know, uh, Nicholas Sparks, something like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and you know, our lives are going to look like these, you know, choose your yeah, life right. type stories because isn't that really what we're doing? You know, when we're living our lives, what we're doing is we're making those choices, and every time we make a choice it's telling us to go to page whatever and you know you go over to that page and you know we start reading through what that means and then we go over to the next page and the next choice and so there really isn't that you know nice linear you know i'm, I'm starting this and moving to this and moving to this you know and for some people who you know i think they feel their lives are moving that way that's fine but i think if you really examine it deeply i don't know many people whose life is that linear you know and if yours is that's that's fine that's your life that's your story but if, if you're out there struggling and, and trying to figure out why isn't my life linear mm -hmm. stop struggling that, that's the way i would look at it. just, just yeah. don't struggle because life isn't <laughs> linear our age is linear <laughs> you know and our birthdays come in a linear way <laughs> but that's it you know so we, we are all over that book, you know, and, and, and I think one of the things that we're missing as a society, yeah. uh, you know, is. So uh, Rhiannon like says, Rhiannon's. if your life is that <laughs> linear, then you're not paying attention yeah. and you're not really living. That's so true. Exactly. Well, and, and there are those, uh, I don't know who does, you know, the quotes, you know, it, it's, if, if you're living your, if life is just live, I don't know, something about, you know, yeah. if, if, you're, yeah. if, if there is like no adventure smoothly, life or something, you're, you're not really you know, living or something. I, something's I kind of gone wrong because you, you're, you kind yeah, of fall asleep, you know, that, um, you know, and it's in a way there should be, mm -hmm. there should be some struggle at least to challenge yourself i don't mean like let me get in a fight today so that there's some conflicts so there's some struggle but like in terms of like yeah yeah you know yeah, like, the drama. Go like, let's get some drama because. going and, and that's really that's really sad but but you can also mm -hmm. what, what's interesting though in terms of <laughs> of service like i think i always think of um a lot of a lot of people are actually bored and miserable because they are the most, <clears throat> excuse me, they are the most important things in their life and they're the center of their world. But sometimes by no fault of their own, sometimes it's just set up right. like that. But one of the things that really helps that is service and sometimes um, service in secret so that a lot of people don't even know that you're doing it, that you're just doing it. And then by that, you are, someone else is, is a focus of a lot of your attentions and you actually get a break from yourself. You know what I mean? Like you don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? But in doing mm -hmm. that, Exactly. That automatically adds drama to your life because usually the people who need help have a lot of stuff going on. And it's not so simple as um, I'm going to help this person. It's nice, clean, and easy and done. Usually you mm. wind up getting your hands a little dir dirty and it's kind of messy. And the person who needs help, right. you don't want to get enmeshed with them, but you're going to wind up it's going to wind up not being neat and simple and like writing a check is, you know, oh, I'm going to write a check and help someone. Here you go. I'm done. It's going to be like, mm -hmm. oh, this person needs some help so they need to go to the doctor and pick up up some medicine that's not all they need they also didn't have anything to eat today so maybe i could make a meal and they're a little lonely too so 
I'll sit with them. Oh, then they, they're complaining about something. So, so it's like, it's not so easy mm -hmm. like that. And that's actually, that's a good drama to add to your life. Like a good struggle to add to your life, but it winds up mm -hmm. taking the burden off of you thinking about yourself. So it's, it's interesting how um, then your right. life would get more complicated and it's, you know, then there's people who go in the opposite direction and then that's, they never think of themselves and they just help other people and it's almost a way to escape mm -hmm. themselves. And so, you know, it's a balance because right. you see people who to help as a way to avoid their own inner world. And so, you know, you, you have to strike a balance, mm -hmm. but I think that that's a kind of an interesting way to make your story more adventurous is to actually make sure other people are added to it. Right. Well, and, and I think, you know, a lot of times within society, we've been geared for mm -hmm. everything being quick. So, you know, you have, uh, you know, the fast food and, you know, instant messages and everything is coming in quick. And the story that yeah. you just described <laughs> is not quick. Yeah. It's spending time with someone, you know, so how many, you know, of us now in society, when we look at what our story is, that our, our mm. stories are becoming the fast food versus yeah. sitting down to a really good dinner. And, you know, we're going to take our time with this. You know, when you look at previous generations, that's what was the thing that you did. You know, you, you sat with uh, family or, or with a neighbor and just listened to their story because we didn't seem so rushed back then. Or, uh, you know, if you're, you know, sitting with someone nowadays, you know, we, we start getting bored and we drift off and, you know, we got to run to something, but instead of running to something, sit and enjoy, sit and learn from someone. But I, I think we've missed that whole notion of storytelling, you know, and, and what really, you know, gets to me is, um, you know, when in our society, we have a lot of stories. I mean, books and ebooks everyone is you know buying these stories and movies yeah. and tv shows that's all story but we tend not to sit down and mm -hmm. listen to each other's story you know we, we want to pay big bucks to go to the movies and, and see this fictional story or you know what it may yeah, be I have a but Hi, we won't sit down with you know an elderly Hi, family we can't member. see you you can't see yeah me. wait one second well, somebody come can you in. see me Yes, I can hear you, but can't see you. Uh, do you want me to? Oh, okay, okay. Just so, an audio. I'm going over what Chris just said. And, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, stories and, you know, when people just rise up and, you know, they have stuff to do. Don't you feel that, you know, on some degree, that, you know, that, you know, on degree of utility, there is less of a need to sit down, you know, with um, with people who tell stories. And, you know, there's there's not very much utility and wasting that much time on you know frivolous things where you know you need to get up and you need to go to work and you need to pick up your kids from school and you need to do this and you need to do that like you can't really spend too much time listening to stories i just feel that you know time utility is very mm -hmm. precious and um you know stories you know i mean of course i've just, i've read the great stories of you know Nietzsche and you know seneca and you know so on and so forth but i just don't feel that you know sitting down and spending time mm -hmm. that you are dedicated on doing something else with is very viable in um, the industry that we live in, and uh, I feel that I feel that you know there's there's a there's a clear misconception right. in, in your understanding of um, of utility, and I feel that you know if you feel that by you know in terms of uh, you know using time to listen to stories, we're not children anymore. We can't you know spend too much time listening to Winnie the Pooh anymore. And I feel that I mean even though you're clearly older than I am, you must you know clearly want some desire to grow up and you know there isn't really time life is a story in some sort of way it's a journey but you know there's no arrival to success you 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 always go through the process of success but you know there's no time for the sorts of things you're talking about I'm sorry it's a mm -hmm. ridiculous statement <laughs> well and 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 I hear what you're saying because for a lot of ways, I don't have time to sit and listen to somebody's story. And, um, <laughs> and and I love Winnie the Pooh, but I haven't read Winnie the Pooh since I was probably, I don't know, decades ago. 
But I, I guess my challenge for all of this is to find the time within our lives to sit at some point with someone and just hear their life story. Where, where have they come from? What have they experienced? And what can I learn from somebody else's story? And I, I hear what you're saying and, and a, a thing that in my old age that I, you know, really have some sympathy over in, in a sense is where did we lose that? You know, wh when did our society change from being able to sit to now we don't? And, and that, I don't know when that happened or why that happened, but I know when I was growing up many, many moons ago, you know, my family would have neighbors over for card games and board games. And a lot of those games was just people talking and sharing their days and their stories. But we don't do that anymore. And, and I don't know where that I mean, came I need from. To, I'm you know, just why is that level changed? Of understanding I don't know. Where your thought model comes from. Where, where, what, what, sort of, uh, what sort of industry do you work in? For myself, I am a counselor and a, a counselor uh, and a what? minister. Campus minister. So you're campus minister. Religious um, uh, person. Yes, I focus. I on, see. Uh, I see. Virtuality. So um, you're not really experienced in the idea of time utility and management of um, management of uh, you know utility and finances. It's not really your sort of uh, area of expertise, I gather. Given that you are more of a spiritual person who believes in magic well, in the sky, you're not really uh, very um, acquainted with the idea of utility of time. That's why, you know, you can look at... You can... Well, well, myths are, are wonderful uh, uh, I things mean, you, out there. But, uh, very, very, um, you've had, you know, but, lots of experience in life, clearly, but you're not very, very wise. And uh, I feel that, you know, your well. comes from a misunderstanding of utility of time. <laughs> I mean, you know, given that, given that, yeah, don't interrupt, don't interrupt. Well, and, so, you know, that, given that fine. we, you know, have limited time and limited, you know, chances of survival on this planet, I feel that listening to other people's stories of their lives is not really a very useful way to manage my time. And if you feel that, you know, you could just sit with someone, your family, and you could go to uh, card games with your family, you're not really looking at the core issues. You're not looking at the deep recession we just came out of. You're not looking at the recession we're about to go into. You're just looking at, you know, the stories you want to tell. I think it's a ridiculous thing. I'm not sure if you're married or if you even have, you know, any sort of immediate family. But, I mean, you can't really go through life thinking like that. It's a very weak and very, very immature way to think about life. And you need to grow up. Okay. Well, thanks for your opinion. Well, I, I appreciate the opinion. Very, uh, and, very um, attentive to the sort of discussion so, that we're having. Clearly, your host, so you have some sway over the general dialogue that we're having here. Could you uh, chime in a bit? Well, I, I, I would just say, you know, there, and, and I appreciate your, you know, opinion on that. Um, yeah, I mean, personally, I, I'm working three jobs, have a family, and actually, most of my career, I was an executive director or CEO. So, yeah, that? I do have an understanding of all that, but I think we need yeah. to challenge ourselves. Yeah, you said you, said you were maybe a CEO. What, what but that's just my did take. You, um, did you run a CEO? I was I was running a patient medical, medical treatment, treatment facilities. And, uh, is that a listed company? Is it publicly listed? I'm, sure. I'm not sure it's no, a good those idea. Are, to, no, that's a general. I'm not sure it's a good uh, idea to I, name I, you know a medical company and patients. I don't think that's. Uh, a good idea. That's why I didn't name it. That's the that's the yeah, general term I mean, it, for it. It, it was an inpatient it, it, facility it where play, yeah, it makes a play yeah, on the so web. I'm not naming where I was. Given that okay, um, uh, Lisa Mustafa or whatever your name is. I'm gonna just chime in You're here. And uh, are you in the United States right now? Sorry, are you in the United States right now? No, no. Okay. Well, thanks so much for your input. I'm going to boot you out now so we can well, get back on topic. Rude. I mean, I came here to yeah, contribute maybe to the topic. Is. Bye bye now. Um, so it yeah that was a takeover maybe, but um, it's nice to have input. But <laughs> after a while, we we gotta gotta rein it in. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, yes. Yeah. And and I do hear what he's saying, and and that's really where you know that 
I, I just, you know, want to put in there of putting, you know, yeah, how do we uh, challenge ourselves Yeah, I mean, that? I appreciate what he has so. to say, but I, I think that talking about our lives as a story is a lot different than whatever he was talking about, time management. Most of us have at least a little bit of time, like to be on Blab, for instance, is kind of a utility situation. And so <clears throat> that's maybe not the best management of time in that case. Um, so, yeah, there's probably for, for him... Right. Uh, maybe, maybe you can go to a different lab. I, I bet you'll find a better one, maybe in business or something like that. But thanks for chiming in, and um, we'll go back to talking about this. It's you never know what you're going to get, do you? But um, mm -hmm. well, and that's it's yeah, all part so of our, our lives um, and our stories. So. <laughs> People are hilarious. So um, yeah. So in terms of in terms of kind of when you have a story that starts out kind of not of any of your own doing, but starts out really really bad, for instance, um, and you're trying to turn that around. One of the best parts of story is redemption. I, I love the stories of redemption. They don't have to have a real saccharine sweet ending on them. Like if I'm if I'm watching a a movie or reading a story or just hearing mm -hmm. about someone's story. One of the one of the best things. There's a lot of people who appreciate this too, um, who say things along the line. I think it was even Oprah who says she loves stories of redemption and she funds these types of things and stuff, stuff like that. And I think she's not alone in that. Is that when you when you have your own story started off very rocky or tumultuous or whatever, and you're looking for those moments of redemption, those are those turning points in the story. There's a climax or the crux of the story goes goes one way and then all of a sudden it goes the other way and it's finding those nuggets mm -hmm. in there where you can kind of claim redemption for yourself and your own story things get really really interesting right. and that has always been something it's not like you have to sit down and listen to someone for 10 hours but you can listen to somebody for 10 mm -hmm. minutes and essentially get to the nugget of their redemption story. And I work with the incarcerated population. I know that's not a time utility thing and that's probably a waste of my time. But uh, when I work with the incarcerated population, they tell me stories of redemption that I find very hopeful. And it's people like that who have gone in one terrible direction or through no fault of their own have been raised in terrible, terrible circumstances of abuse and suffering and drugs in their neighborhoods and mothers who have had um, drug addictions and problems and they didn't have that much of a choice in terms of their surroundings. And they ended up on the streets and they ended up poor and mm -hmm. impoverished and they got into drugs and then they ended up in federal prison and somehow they found a way to turn their story around. And I, I found that I found those stories so incredibly powerful that it makes my story and my right. suffering look pretty minuscule in comparison. And, and so I don't know if anybody else has, has found <laughs> um, other people's stories of redemption and, and renewal inspiring. But I know that for me, and maybe that's a waste of time to listen to people's stories, but to me, that gives me hope to go through the tough times and through the struggles in my own life. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, and, you know, that's why a lot of the self-help groups work so well. And there's a lot of reasons why they're working well. But one of those reasons is exactly what you said, is that when we understand that we're not alone and there's other people who are suffering, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, more so than me or not, that doesn't really matter. But the point is there's other people who are suffering as well. And it becomes, you know, what can I learn from their suffering that might be able to help my suffering? Or we can look and say, you know, what have they done, um, you know, in their lives? And that might be something that I can work on. So I, I think, you know, the whole point of, of our live stories, you know, we don't live, uh, you know, in, in an island. And, you know, when we are affected by something, we're affecting others. And when others try to help us, then they're also, uh, you know, helping themselves and helping us. And, and that's the point, you know, I think of sharing what our stories are instead of just keeping them in. And what do you think about, um... Let's see, I was going to ask you one more thing. 
as far as what do you think about um, that stories in, in the sense of our lives, how much do you think is changeable versus how much is sort of determined? Do you, do you think, have you ever studied anything like that too? Not, not so much maybe free will predestination, but I'm not talking so much in terms of that, but do you think that mm -hmm. we, how much do you think we can chart our course versus what is sort of charted for us? Uh, the way that I've seen in my own life and, and with others' lives that it really comes down to the choices that we make. I don't think we have a predestination, but that the choices we make are going to lead us into another realm, another chapter. But at the same time, when we're in that other chapter, we're learning from those previous chapters. So it's not so much in, in my mind to say that we're predestined to it, but we might have been mm -hmm. previously trained, and I'll put that in quotes, uh, for what we're doing. You know, and for myself, one of the things that I look at is, you know, what I'm doing now, I had the perfect training way back in the seminary, multiple jobs prior, you know, to what I'm doing now that really prepared me for what's going on mm. right now at this moment. So when you look back on that and, and you know, wonder, well, what was the point of that chapter? Or, you know, where is that going to get me? Well, it, it took a couple decades later to find out this is where it's taking me. And I'm not going to say I was predestined to this job, but I can look back and say, well, I've been trained toward this job. And for me, I think that's where our chapters become important. You know, yeah, we're not linear, but mm -hmm. we do have things to draw upon. And we really should try our best to draw upon, you know, what we can uh, from the past. Okay. All right. I'm going to let somebody else, I'm going to unlock the seat, but there's some wildness out there. So let's see if we can do this. All right. I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that we can, we can all stay kosher and nice because it was getting a little nasty there. All right. Does someone want to call in? All right. If you want to call in, go ahead. Here's your chance. Hey, yeah, I'm sorry if the sun is overwhelming. I, I'm, my, my, okay. my, my computer, my computer is, is uh, literally drilled into my, into my table. Yeah, you know. Well, it's great to see somebody at a place where there's sun because I've had rain for three weeks now. <laughs> No, Seems unfortunately, like I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> where you see the sun for two days <laughs> and then the rest of the time. Crippling depression is what the weather gives you. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, uh, there was something, I, there exactly. was something I, I, I heard that uh, Lisa and, and also you were related to as well. I, I forgot what it was. But, you know, <laughs> I, that's, that's the sad part about it. That's why I, that's why I wanted to be called in. But the thing is, like, I, mean, I think in general, right, like, like people, if pe people need to realize that everything that you do right is is what makes you better work is a habit right so you're not, it, it, depend, it doesn't matter if you want to learn a new language mm -hmm. or play an instrument or what have you the day you start is going to be your worst day and then as you get as as you continue to do as you continue to do it you get better and better you don't get worse than you were yesterday right and and as, as a human being if you just stick to something you always you always get better like i'm a business owner myself um, I was a heroin addict in San Francisco so almost almost four years ago. I was kicked out of my house. Wow. I was I was kicked out of my house at 14. Mm -hmm. And now wow. and 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 not yeah, yeah, at 14, like you know, my, my mother was um she's she's a good woman, but she she just couldn't handle me. I was I was very ADHD, but you know, I was never medicated. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I should have been medicated. You know, I, I, I mean the thing is the thing is in the end, like I think when you're when you're put against resistance like when you're put against something that is very hard or an obstacle you have to figure out how to, mm -hmm. how to climb over it and once you figure out how to climb over it like you said uh chris you you remember exactly like you like like your in your past like this is this is this is what made me stronger i know exactly how to deal with the new situation in front of you you see you yeah. see what i'm saying is that is that does that make any sense oh exactly i have a question for you i'm and sorry the, reed can i ask you a go question go ahead, go ahead. um Right, right. How did what well, what turned it around for you? What what made the change? <laughs> I was fucking starving and I got arrested. 
I got arrested three times for shoplifting, and I was like, okay, well, because I had to steal food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to steal food from mm -hmm. yeah. I was young. And, uh, and like that literally ch that changes your life. It's like, okay, well, am I going to continue being a, a constant criminal, or am I going to continue, or am I going to build wow. something for myself? Right. And and like and to be honest with you, like like I had to, I had to go to casinos and play war every single day. And just make so so I take a hundred dollars and I just want to make twenty dollars out of it, right? Mm -hmm. So like that's twenty percent of my money. That's better than most hedge funds are doing right now. And I get <laughs> and I and that's how that's how I look at it. I'd make twenty. I'd make twenty dollars. I didn't live too far. I made twenty dollars. Sometimes I'd lose money and what have you. But I used that money. It was about eight thousand dollars. I used that to buy uh, to buy uh, I forgot what I, the Beats pills. I think it was the first thing I ever bought. Uh, um. um uh, when I when I was uh, when I was when I was uh, doing that, so I, I bought it from a company called Beastock Solutions, which liquidates a whole bunch of things like mm -hmm. so, like insurance, bought stuff, things that returned by uh, things that were returned because customer unsatisfaction, what have you. And I ended up selling those, and I bought Jordans and and and, uh, and Nike SBs. But I think it was the fear of being homeless and, yeah. and poverty yeah. and, and starvation mm -hmm. that makes that makes right. me strong. Like you have to go against adversity. If not, then you're just you're gonna have a pamper. Mm. That's really inspirational. I appreciate mm -hmm. you sharing that. And and it's kind of it's kind of like when mm. your back's against the wall, you can either give up or you can be like, nope, I'm turning it around. And um, right. that's a really mm. that's see and and see your story is powerful. This is what I what I think people don't realize how powerful their stories actually are. And when you tell that to somebody. You can pick them up from despair and and say, like your story has inspired me, and, and I'm sure that it could inspire a lot of other people too. And maybe you've shared it already a whole bunch of times. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. I, I I'm very I'm very oh. closed about it, and like that, that is something that I don't. Yeah. This is why I said like you know I love yeah. these deep conversations. Like mm -hmm. because I think I've always said like I've I've said this before that Blab should be a place where you could come and talk to people about yeah. constructive That's things. Totally. You know we can like. You, most labs are they're just they're sitting around they're talking about dicks. <laughs> true, true. And like you know, like, like, not, not, nothing, nothing <laughs> right, at all, right? right? No. Yeah. And and I, and uh, and one thing that uh, I, uh, here's what I remembered when I, when I, mm -hmm. thing I forgot earlier is the most the most the most the, the best charity you could give somebody is just to lend you the lend lend them your yeah, ear. Yeah, so true, so true. Yes, especially if they're going through yes. hard time. Because because it's like you know I was I was just talking to somebody about this the other day about grief and loss and death. And there's no words you can say to help somebody like, oh, they needed another angel in heaven. It's like, yeah, no one wants to hear that. <laughs> you know, no, nobody no. wants to hear that. No. But if you just sit sit with them and say, I'm here, I'm not gonna bother saying anything because I know I'm not gonna say anything good enough. But if you want to talk, um, I'll listen to whatever you have to say. Or if you want to say nothing, I'm here too. If you just want to cry, right. fine. Right. Because because just yeah. the presence of somebody that you know that they're going to stay there, even if it's boring <laughs> and it's not a good use utility of your time, um, even if that happens, you just have somebody who has your back. And that makes mm. such a huge difference. Just like you're right. just like sharing your story. Oh, yes. Dude, 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 check this mm -hmm. out, right? So. Um, Marilyn Manson. Okay, so when it came down to the uh, Columbine shootings, Marilyn, Ma I think you guys probably may have heard of this, but Marilyn Manson, he, uh, he was asked, what would you say to the shooters in Columbine? He would said, he said, I wouldn't say anything. I would have listened to them because obviously mm. nobody did. Wow. And like, right. and, 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 and it was, it was the most, yeah. and, and it was the most real con like, con like, like, like uh, line that has ever been spoken on, on TV. It's true. You need to start listening mm -hmm. to people more and, and, and actively so. And, you don't even you don't even have to talk back to them or like give them your input or mm -hmm. what have you. Just sometimes your your best points come when you're just you just you're yeah. just venting with somebody and right. riffing with somebody, you know. And I love yeah. I love I love this like the second I walked into this room, I was I was very happy that this was actually That's going it. on. Well, yeah, you know? I'm glad you showed up and I'm glad you, you know, mentioned that because who knows who's I don't know who's listening. There's there's like 37 people, but somebody probably needed to hear that. And think, you know, mm -hmm. um, they might not be starving and have to figure out how to do it, but obviously you did, and good for you. I mean, that that's that's grit. Like grit is something you can't teach people. You can't be like, first you do this, and second you you know, grit is something you have to be like, dang it, I'm 
you know, you just and where you just go, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm I'm just gonna pull myself yeah. up by my bootstraps and I'm just gonna make it work no matter what. You know, and that's what you did. And so and so when people hear that, yes, they say, yes. you know, if if he can do it, I'm gonna just I'm gonna keep trying. Right. Right. And and exactly. one of the things you, know, you mentioned, Reed, oh, yeah. that I think is so important is, you know, a lot of what I'm doing is working with teenagers. And a lot of the things that bothers teenagers is they feel that they're not heard. Yeah. And, you know, just to sit there and give them that time, sometimes that's all it, it takes. You know, it's just that they know they were heard by someone. So I, I think we we tend to miss that. Uh so right, you know, we, we need someone to, to talk to. Someone to talk to. That mm -hmm. is it. Like you know, like it's like, the old, it's like the Billy Joel song. I'm 24 right now, and I, I'm pretty young. And and like you know, it was like oh, I just need someone, somebody that I can <laughs> talk to. I love you just the way you are. like. You know, you need you need you really do need someone to talk to, mm -hmm. and 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 especially if it's if it's if it's somebody of the opposite mm -hmm. sex, right? Some like no no to be like my my best friend is a female, and. The reason, like, so, so here's another thing about me, right? My mother was so hard on me, like, like to the point where, like, it, like I, I literally, I literally had to get kicked out because I was so stubborn. And now I see, like, whenever I, whenever I date a woman, I see them, I see them as somebody who was going to keep me in line. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if I, if, if I'm let, like, like seriously, so if I'm out of, if I'm out of control, my apartment's dirtier or whatever, my condominium is dirtier, what have you. I would, or my life is in shambles. I'd call, not only my mother now, but but uh, my friend Amanda as well. And I know that because that, like, because they're they're going to give them give me unimpeachable, unbiased information about me. Like, yeah, you know, hey, look, okay, well, you what do you, do you want? Do you want? Do you want me to say good <laughs> words to you, or do you want me to to actually or to, to criticize you? I'm not going to sugar the pill. Right. They never sugar mm -hmm. the pill. They're they're literally ruthless with me, and, and that so you reconcile with your mom because I need that. I need you did. That. That's I great. have. Yes, I have. Because that yes. doesn't always happen either. Mm -hmm. You know, once once there's a big problem like that, that you were able to go back and fix the relationship. Mm -hmm. well, right, and 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 the reason the reason being is be the reason being is because, well, you know, like in the end, they always say all you yeah. have is your family, and I knew exactly why she was hard on me. I knew I was a stubborn kid, right? As, and as you get and as you and as you get older, you realize that like every single time your parents are, are, are bad mouthing you, it's not because you're a bad kid. It's because it's because you don't know anything. You haven't lived their their, their right. life. They want they want they want you to radiate radiate good 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 yeah. messages in the world. Uh, exactly. But what were you saying? Uh, what were you saying, Chris? Uh, Chris uh, well, I, I was just agreeing. You know, that's that tough love, you know. Uh, notion you know i'm sure that was tough on your mother to do what she did but she probably you know knew that it, it was something that you needed and she did what she thought was best for you so yeah i, I, I think that's that's powerful dude dude so here's here's how here's how it all it all went down so she was like she was like you think you have she was like you think you have you have you uh, like you have this 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 benefit of being an american or being born in america i'm from nigeria right. she's from she's nigerian and she and, and my mother and my dad's my Nigerian. She was like, we had to walk, walk ten miles every every single week and sleep on an oil farm in order wow. to put you guys here, in order to bring you guys here, right? And, yeah. and she was like, and she was like, hey, you know what? Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you to Nigeria. She bought a ticket to send me to Nigeria into a boarding school, and I just left. So I didn't really get kicked out per se, but she but she wanted to ship me off, and I left, mm -hmm. and I never wow. came back. But but at the same time, at the at the same time. It was powerful because, like now, like you know, like now I, I realize that the world is not an easy place, it, like, and nobody can give you anything. You have to work for everything you have. Every single relationship teaches you about some about yourself. Right. Every woman that you that you that you uh, date teaches you more about yourself. If you're, are you socially awkward? Do you stutter? Uh, you know, do you have smelly <laughs> feet or what have you? Like whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is, it, it teaches you about yourself. Every job you have teaches you yeah. about your work ethic and how and how sharp and how you can climb the the corporate ladder. And and that's why I learned at 14 years old. And I think that that a lot of people today, there's just they're they're too sheltered and pampered and what have you. And it's like you know, right. like, people people you know people before you suffered mm -hmm. way harder. I mean, the, the American Revolution. Which, the American Revolution, for instance, 
a lot of people didn't have shoes for crying out loud. And they still be there. <laughs> they still be there and they're going to yeah. get on their feet. Yeah, isn't that yeah. amazing? And but there's something the about there, there's something about earning earning your way, earning your own way that makes you really appreciate it. Like when stuff gets handed to you, and you don't have to, and you don't have to see what it's really like to, to do it yourself. That you you just don't get it. You don't get that sense, right? Yeah, and, you and don't you value just, it. if you haven't had to really don't struggle, <laughs> and that's that's the one thing. Um, a, a woman a woman said this uh, to a friend of mine. She passed along to me, and and it was funny. Her son was mad at her because he said because they're from upper upper class, you know, upper middle class, and he goes, West, you know, you. Uh, you white collar abused me. She's like, "What's that supposed to mean?" She goes, "You, you gave me everything. Oh. You gave me everything, and I never had to struggle." So even he considered that abuse too, because uh, <laughs> now I don't know what it's like to struggle in the world. She's like, "Ah, you know, so you know, you can't win, I guess, as a parent. You could give him everything, and he still hates you. Right? You could give him, you give him nothing, he hates you. But um, I." I Oh, okay, so so anyway, the, the whole idea is that it is true that if your kids struggle more, they they are more grateful and and it's not pleasant at the time. It's not going to be like, yay, I'm struggling. My parents are trying to make me, you know, work for you know, starting at fourteen or sixteen, and they're they're making me get a job. And you know, no one's going to be like, hooray, I have to work. <laughs> Dude, I came up with a good line that that reaches on that point, right? So I said, look. Parents, it's it's it, parents. Okay, so for instance, okay, so it's the the child should never apologize for how much wealth or how hard their parents broke their back in order to mm. give them a good life. So like, like so kids kids shouldn't say, oh yeah, well you're you oh you're rich. Okay, well because my parents made me that way. They they built this nest for me in order for me mm -hmm. to go and, and go into the world and mm. help other people. Why is that a bad thing? Like, you know, so like everybody says, oh, Donald Trump. Oh, yeah, he, you got a small loan of $2 million. So what? <laughs> like, is, is, that, is that like that without <laughs> giving him $2 million? He wouldn't give you he wouldn't give you $2 million. He doesn't know you. He worked his ass off in order to make sure his kids were successful. And one of his kids killed him, oh. killed themselves. One of their kids died from alcohol, mm. from alcoholism. And, and, and it was a sad thing. But like, like as, as parents, it's our duty to deliver young children mm -hmm. into, into, into adulthood and make sure one of, one of my, my Jewish dentists once told me, he said, he said, look, <laughs> he said, look, you know what? Um, he said, uh, 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 oh, fuck, uh, uh, I'm, I'm drawing blank right now. I'm not, go ahead and talk about it. I'll, well, I'll remember it in a second. <laughs> this, this, this son is breaking my I hope you do right. remember, but we'll probably do, do, we should wrap up in a little bit. We're usually just go for an hour, but uh, we'll try to come back here on a Sunday. Right. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. We usually come back on a Sunday on Eastern time at 8 p.m. And you can look for our Twitter feed. You can follow me at, at Lisa Delay on Twitter. And Chris, you're, I'm what's that? You follow me on Blab. You can follow me on Blab. That's cool too. And I have a podcast called Spark My Muse. You can listen on iTunes or on sparkmymuse.com, and it comes out twice a week. And the next one on Friday is going to be about embracing your weirdness. So that'll be that'll be good. All three of us are pretty weird, I guarantee it. Oh, that sounds, oh, that's, <laughs> that sounds fun. That sounds very yep. fun. Uh, so yeah. Can't wait so to hear that one. <laughs> that's what makes you that much. Oh, no, no. Yeah, he said he said the, the most important thing is to pass oh. down character, not well. Character is absolutely what matters. Oh, yeah. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not about what, like you know, it's a, it's like the old saying, you know, wealth is of the heart. And oh, mind that's and so true. Pocket. And I think, and wealth is also your connections yeah. with people. I think in the yeah. end, Love you it. won't have, you won't be able to use your money, you won't be able to use your body, but the relationships that you have and you develop um, with people you've invested in, those people will still show up, you know, and uh, you can't take any of it with you, but right. you know, your friends. Mm -hmm. The, the attachments right. that you form, you you live on in those people, and that's that's another kind of eternal life too, because you you still live on in their in their memories and in in your legacy. Absolutely, absolutely. It's like like what my what my what what my Angelo exactly. said. Like you know, you, no one will remember what you say, but people remember people will for damn sure remember how oh. you made how you made them feel. Okay. <laughs> how you made them feel. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. For twenty, you have, you have, you're a really wise you guy already. To. So you're yeah, a yeah. smart guy already. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm street smart. I'm like, I mean, I can't do like that. That's really <laughs> okay. awesome. I appreciate that you came on and you had a lot of wisdom to share, and I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Th thank you, Reed. That, that was Adios. awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. On. You guys take it on again. Enjoy your Sunday. You. <laughs> Enjoy your Sunday. Awesome. All right, you take it easy, right? <laughs> All right, awesome. thanks. You too. He redeemed it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to do what we were in for. I was like, are we going to keep getting craziness? But um, <laughs> yeah, when people come on like, and they're like, you suck. I, I never know exactly what to do because I want, I want it to work out. But then you're like, I think you just have a beef and you were angry before you got on here. <laughs> like, I, I never wanted to pull the plug. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know, at some, at some point you have to do it. <laughs> Yeah, it was awesome. uh, I, I, it, I love it when people. In the end, it went well. <laughs> like, have a, a real good word, or they have a real good story. It's, it's so so cool. I love to hear from people like that. It's so awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, awesome. So, so this yeah. will be on replay too. You can catch this on replay on Blab, or you can go to my website at sparkmymuse.com, mm -hmm. and they'll it'll be up in my Twitter feed, and I'm sure here on Blab too. Do you have any parting words, Chris? Any words of wisdom? Of, is that here? Yeah. I don't know about wisdom, but uh, I, I, you know, just want to reiterate and, you know, thank everybody who was, uh, you know, participating and, um, but just, you know, want to really encourage people, you know, let, let's uh, listen to people's stories and, you know, see what their stories can teach us and what do our previous chapters teach us, you know, and uh, as Lisa was saying, you know, if you want to look for the, you uh, um, you know, replay of this, it'll be on my Blab uh, page, as well as I'll post it up on my uh, podcast, which is uh, on Finding Peace, and you can do a Google search on that, and uh, Very good. check me out at livestreamblog.com. We'll see you again sometime soon. Great. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.